Hello everyone, and welcome back to DMG. Not too long ago, we looked at the 12-inch Latitude E4200 from around 2008. This is quite an impressive little laptop for its size and its age, but it is missing some features that would be nice. What if you want almost all the features of a full-size 14-inch Latitude, but you want the size and shape of this one, though? Well, today we're looking at the E4200's big brother, the E4300. It's a 13-inch laptop, barely larger than the 12-inch E4200, but one inch really does make all the difference here. It improves upon or totally fixes every single complaint I had with the E4200. And honestly, if you can get one of these, I wouldn't even recommend considering the E4200 because it's just that good. Without any further ado, I should show you why I am so excited to have this. So let's get right into it. Here it is. On the top, we can see it's pretty much identical to the E4200. In size, it's only about half an inch taller and half an inch wider. So it has the same overall shape and it's really not that much larger. Please excuse the fact that this is scratched up. Uh, it was the only one I could find with this CPU that wasn't at an exorbitant price. And speaking of the CPU, the E4200 had a 1.6 gigahertz Core 2 Duo, 10 watts, with three megabytes of L2 cache. The CPU in this laptop is a significant improvement, one of the most significant improvements this laptop has to offer over the E4200. It has a 2.4 gigahertz Core 2 Duo with twice the L2 cache, although it uses 25 watts, warranting uh, the slightly heavier and larger cooler that this laptop has. When it comes to I.O., this laptop has all of the ports of the E4200, plus a few more. Here's our hardware Wi-Fi switch, which is always good to have, USB 2, IEE 1394, headphone, microphone, express card, and an optical drive. Uh, didn't mean to turn that on. On the front, we actually have an SD card reader. Over here is our hard drive, and it's set up like other latitudes of this era, where it slides out instead of being the weird little SSD the E4200 has. Here is an intake for the fan, and because this is a 25 watt processor, it does need beefier cooling, as I mentioned. Oh yeah, and this takes a standard 2.5 inch SATA SSD instead of the weird little micro SATA mess that the E4200 has, which is a great improvement because you can put a, a way faster drive in here than in the E4200. And then we have VGA and combo E SATA and USB 2. Here's your charger. Here's your uh, Ethernet port. And before I forget, the reason I bought it with this processor is it's the fastest one that you could get in here. It is a Core 2 Duo P8400 for anyone wondering. Now the layout on the bottom is very unique to this device. The E4200 just has this big panel that comes off, as do the 14-inch latitudes. But this one has two separate panels. Under here are the wireless cards and all of that, and right here is your uh, CPU and your RAM. The CPU is soldered, which allows it to be a lot thinner and lighter, but that's the reason I just bought it from the factory with the fastest CPU you could get, because there's no way to upgrade it. 1.6 to 2.4 gigahertz and twice the cache might seem like a trivial upgrade these days, but trust me, it makes all the difference. This machine is far, far more usable. You also get nice improvements on the inside, like two RAM slots where the uh, E60, sorry, where the E4200 only had one RAM slot. It can take a maximum of eight gigabytes. I currently have six gigabytes installed. It's kind of a weird size, but this laptop doesn't need eight gigabytes. And this, 
<laughs> this screw here is what you take out to remove the optical drive. I actually, <laughs> the optical drive that this came with didn't work. So I swapped in a new one and I actually took off the entire top and keyboard assembly before realizing it was literally as simple as that screw right there that I just didn't see. But because I've already taken off the keyboard and everything, it is nice and clean on the inside now. Let's take this one off. I believe this has the wireless card and that's about it. Yeah, WLAN and WWAN. Uh, all, all pretty simple things that you'd expect to find on a business laptop of this era. Now this laptop has tons of small yet significant quality of life improvements that make it a far better choice than the E4200 in my opinion. If you don't mind having a, a one inch larger laptop that is. For example, you get a point stick and the second set of touchpad buttons. The touchpad is the same size, but it is uh, fantastic to have this additional input method for those of you who prefer it, like I do. You also have actual clicking hardware uh, volume buttons instead of the weird touch controls on the E4200. And this is a much better choice, in my opinion. They are far easier to use. Uh, you can actually hold them down to change the volume a lot more than just 2% at a time. Like you had to, on the E4200, you have to continually tap them. It also has stereo speakers, left and right. And they aren't that much better than the E4200, but they do sound a, a little bit better. And it's always appreciated to have something better than the bare minimum. So let's go ahead and get into our OS so I can demonstrate this a little more. This laptop has the same 1280 by 800 display as the E4200. 1280 by 800 is a 16 by 10 resolution with about the pixel count of 720p, well between 720p and 1366 by 768 but its 16 by 10 aspect ratio means that you can fit more vertical lines, which I actually prefer for web browsing and word processing, which are the two things this laptop is built specifically to do. With that more powerful CPU and a slightly larger screen, and of course more features, you would think the battery life would take a hit, and yes, it does. The battery in here has about 20% wear because I like to use the original batteries, but it still only gets about 20% less than the E4200, which is uh, absolutely fantastic. And it's totally worth it for the speed improvement over that 1.6 gigahertz Core 2 Duo. I said it was noticeable earlier in the video, and yes, it very much is. Now the keyboard on here is a lot less clicky, but it still has the same tactile feel. Whereas the E4200's keyboard was irritatingly loud, this one keeps the same feel, but has a much more muffled sound to it. You also get a webcam up here on the bezel. Hello, here I am. And it's actually a pretty decent webcam. Uh, I don't know how many megapixels it is. Will the camera app tell us? It is a 1600 by 1200, 1.9 megapixel webcam, which honestly is totally sufficient for video calls. I've seen new laptops that look worse than this from like 2016, 2017, etc. So it's a, it's a good laptop and I do quite like it. I cannot state enough just how much better the speakers on the E4300 are compared to the E4200. The E4200 single speaker is so terrible that it's hard to understand dialogue in a Zoom call, but the, the, uh, the E4300 stereo speakers are crisp and clear given the laptop's small size. Now they still don't sound particularly good, 
but it, it is it's so much of an improvement with more standard components like an optical drive and a regular SATA SSD nice features like stereo sound a webcam a better ambient light sensor and a point stick on the keyboard and a faster processor and more RAM upgradability this takes everything that you know I, I complained about with the E4200 and fixes it I will actually say that this is my favorite of the Latitude laptops I own. And yes, that's shocking. I own some pretty awesome Latitude laptops. But this one, it's slim shape, it's good battery life, yet all of the features of a 14-inch model, although a few fewer ports, makes it pretty irresistible. So if you can find one of these for really cheap, whether for, you know, actual use or just a hobby machine, I definitely would recommend picking this up. The funny thing is I actually got it for about half the price of the E4200. I paid like 50 bucks for the E4200. But anyway, that's it for this video. Hope this was interesting. Hope you guys enjoyed and uh, hope to see you next time. As always, uh, gonna have some latitude related content coming up so if it interests you stay tuned see you next time